Hello, my name is Mike Hatzis. I'm over here at Dubspot, and in this video, we're going to check out how to edit and slice up audio inside Machine. So now that I have the sample inside Machine, I just want to do some basic editing. I actually just want to go in and remove the silence from the beginning and the end. To edit, I have to hit button 2, which takes me into the editing mode. You can see here that knob 1 will adjust my start point, knob 2 adjusts the end point. So I'm just going to scroll to where I'd like the end to be. Now if I want to zoom in, I could use knob 5 and I could scroll with knob 6. If I need to zoom in on the waveform, I could use knob 5. If I need to scroll on the waveform, I could use knob 6. Again, I'm just trying to get in there and get right up close to the end of that waveform. Let's check the beginning or the start. And the start looks pretty good and I'm happy with that. So now I want to actually crop the silence or anything beyond the start and end point of this file. To do that, I have to go into my audio editor and you'll see I have an option here to truncate. And that'll just crop everything out except what's in between the start and end point. So I'm going to hit truncate. And again, you could see that the silence at the end is now gone. So now that I have a nice clean audio file to work with, I'm ready to go in and slice it. So to get to the slicer, I have to hit button 3, and that takes me into the slicing section inside Machine. You'll see over to the right that I have the waveform that's now has these slice points inside of it. I can trigger individual slices just by hitting the corresponding pad on Machine. So let me just talk a little bit about the different slicing modes we'll have here. You'll see we have split mode, grid mode, and detect mode. What I like to do is I like to kind of just go through and see which slice mode works better for the material at hand. From there, I'll just make some quick edits and then apply those slices to something else. So let's talk about modes a little bit. We have split, grid, and detect mode. I like to actually play around with the different modes, kind of test the waters, and then feel out which one sounds better or works better with the particular loop I'm using. So in split mode, I'm just going to give it a shot, see what we have. That's, that's pretty cool. So let's see what we have with the next mode, which is grid mode. And you'll notice up in the waveform that I have a lot of different slices. The way grid works is it slices it to musical lengths. So you'll see here that it says I have a length of 16th notes for each slice. Again, what grid does is slice the loop up into musical subdivisions. Since I have a loop of four bars, I want to change my length to quarter notes, so then I have 16 slices. So that makes it nice and simple, so I'll have one slice per pad. Let's check out detect mode. Detect mode detects the transients or peaks in the signal and then slices based on those. This is really good for material with lots of transients or peaks like drum loops or bass loops with nice defined hits in them. Let's talk a little bit about how it works. Right now you can see that I don't have any illuminated pads. I have to actually go in and adjust some of the settings up here in detect mode. Now we have some options for tempo. Remember that I sent this audio in for live and it was warped at 99.9 .9 beats per minute. So I'm going to leave it as that. Next thing we want to do is hit the sensitivity knob. You'll see that as I'm turning the sensitivity knob, you'll start to see slices appear on the machine display as well as on the pads. Again, I like to try to keep slices to 16 or less so that I can work with all the slices on one page of pads. So let me just hit the sensitivity a little bit, play around, see what we have. And I think I'm going to go back to grid mode because I think having grid mode 
set to a quarter note length, that gives me the best results with this particular loop. Now that we've sorted out which slice mode works best, let's just do some quick editing of the slices before we apply it. So to edit slices, we're gonna hit button five, which brings us to this slice edit mode. On the left hand display, you could see I could choose my slice, and here I could choose the start and end point for that slice. I could choose a slice by scrolling with knob one, or I could just choose a slice by just hitting a pad. And whatever pad I choose, you'll see that slice is highlighted in the machine display and software. You'll notice that with slice 11, there's a little bit of the vocal coming in at the end of the slice. So I wanna get rid of that. So I just select slice 11 and turn knob four to change my endpoint. And you can see now that that vocal does not come in. That vocal is now transferred to the beginning of slice 12. And I'm just gonna tighten up 12 by moving the start point back. And let's see if that interfered with slice 11. And it looks like slice 11 is good to go. So now that I made a couple quick edits, I'm ready to apply the slices. I have to jump out of edit mode by hitting button five. And you'll see now that I have my apply options. So to apply to a group, I have to hit the apply to button and then I have to choose a group for what I want the slices to be applied to. Notice that C is empty, so I'll just choose group C. And you'll notice two things happen. First, you'll see that each pad has one slice on that pad. Also in the machine software, you'll see it generated a pattern with the corresponding notes, which will trigger those slices. Now that I have everything sliced out to a group, there's a couple things I wanna do. First, I wanna make sure that I can only hear one sound at a time. To do so, I have to go into group and set my polyphony to one. That will set it up so I can only hear one sound at a time. So I can do different things like choke. And you'll notice now that if I play one slice and play the other before that slice is finished, it'll cut off the previous slice from playing. So we just saw one way to slice up some audio inside machine and then make some loops out of it. Also be sure to check out dubspot.com for more production tutorials and tips. Thanks a lot, take care. Welcome to Dubspot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, Dubspot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore Dubspot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.